Hey everyone, it is Brian, and welcome to Thursday. Uh, all the days are blending together at this point. Um, so I am here to give you some information that I think is important. So hopefully a lot of you check this out. I know um, some of it may be too late for some of the things you're doing with your wedding, but um, I, I think there's a lot of things that you're still booking where this is going to be very helpful. So we are talking about contracts and deposit slash retainers. So what that means, what that is, what to expect of it, uh, how to deal with it, dangers, all the things I can think about related to those things. Now, before we jump in, I am not a lawyer. So please do not take anything that I say as like advice on legal things because I have never gone to law school. I am not an expert. I can only tell you what I kind of know or what I've heard or what I've been doing. And in the end, you have to make your own decisions and go with that. So hopefully you don't try and sue me over something that I said on here. I don't think you would, but I got to say it. <laughs> Anyway, all right, so let me see if I can jump in. Oh, what is going on here? Oh, I updated my thing and now it's giving me weird stuff. Okay, so I can go to this. There we go. All right, so let's go to this. Let's go to present this. Okay, hopefully, yeah. All right, I think we're all full screen on this. Um, so I... I don't know if I I don't remember if I'd already been thinking about this at this point or if this next thing kind of made me decide to do this. But so uh, you're probably thinking, why do contracts matter that much? Why is he spending time talking about this? Um, here's why I think I, if I remember correctly, why I decided to have this conversation. I was looking through this group where brides and stuff post. And this one person posted this. It says, hi, I'm looking for a photo and videographer. I can't get a hold of the one I had lined up. No deposit was paid, thankfully. It was six hours for $600, blah, 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 blah. So uh, this kind of stuff is kind of happening a lot. There's With the, with the whole COVID-19 thing and rescheduling, postponing, canceling, uh, this stuff is more important than ever, more important than ever that uh, you aren't losing your vendors, you're not losing money, um, you are protecting yourself as much as you can. Now, in this situation on this one, they didn't sign, I'm guessing they didn't sign a contract, they didn't pay a deposit, and their photographer just disappeared. Just gone. And now they're stuck trying to find somebody, um, maybe last minute, I don't know. So why does this matter? Um, it's protecting you. It's protecting your wedding. It's protecting your money. Um, and so I think all those things are pretty important. So let's jump into it a little bit more. Okay. So let's talk about the contract. Um, everyone's contract is different. You, you look at 10 photographers, they're going to have 10 different contracts. You look at 10 different DJs, they're going to have 10 different contracts. It's all going to be different. So with every vendor you hire, I think you should read through it thoroughly. Now, are you are you going to understand every single thing in there? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but it's better to look and see if there's anything that sticks out to you, you know, and something you have questions about, you can always ask them. Now, in the case that we're talking about, you need to be looking um, to see if there's any clauses that deal with postponing or canceling or changing dates or any of those things. Um, in the wedding world, I guarantee you every contract will have something about that in there. Okay, I, I just can't imagine them not having that built into their contract. So find those clauses and what is their policy? So like if you decide to postpone your wedding, what do you need to do and how is that going to affect you? If you're canceling it completely, that may be even something different. How are they going to deal with it if you cancel? Okay. Some other things to look for that are kind of related to stuff we'll be talking about is the act of God clause or force majeure. And so, so here's the situation that a lot of people are running into. Um, they book a venue 
for March, whatever. This crazy stuff happens. All the venues are shut down, so they cannot have their wedding on March, whatever. Now, from what I've heard, I've heard a lot of different things. Some venues are still keeping their money and, you know, just saying, sorry, guys, you're out of luck. Um, sorry, I've got children slamming doors and going back and forth. Um, you know, some people are like, oh, it's okay. We'll move your date or whatever. Um, so this is, I mean, this is a tough, tricky time that people are running into. Now, the act of God clause basically says, if something out of your power happens, you have no control over it, then this is going to happen. And I think the force majeure is kind of similar. So some people are stating that this whole COVID-19 is basically an act of God type situation where you have no control. You're not postponing because you want to. You're postponing because you have no control over the situation. I mean, you can't have a wedding if the venue is closed. If the government says the venue is closed, the venue is closed. So for a lot of people, that I would assume that that clause would mean that you could get your money back. Okay. Um, now, where we currently are, we are currently, at least in my state and most states, places are opening up again. So does the act of God clause apply now? Probably not, because you could still have your ceremony. You could still have your wedding. Now, I know a lot of people, um, a lot of people are, like the venues are limiting how many people can be there and they're telling you you have to wear a mask. So I know, I know a lot of people now are still postponing. But um, because it's open, I, I think it's going to be hard for you to, to say that this is the act of God clause and you can get your money back. Okay, so just wanted to kind of explain what that stuff was and kind of the situation. Um, now, I, I actually talked to a mother yesterday or the day before where they're running into this. So they were supposed to get married in June, but they decided to push the date back to uh, October and they were able to get most of their people uh, to shift the date, but the photographer was already booked for that new date. So the photographer is keeping their money because technically they could still have the wedding, but they're choosing to move it. Hope that makes sense. Um, as far as the contracts go, if you find something that really worries you, ask questions, but also don't be afraid to ask them to make a change. Unless you're just dealing with like a super, super, super popular place, like a venue that's just booked out um, or a DJ that's just booked out, most of them are going to be flexible and want to help you out. Um, now, if you ask for something ridiculous, they may not do that. But if there's something in the contract that, you know, is just worries you a little bit, you can ask them to see if they'll change it. Okay, for, for example, what I'm currently doing. Um, a lot of people are asking to have something directly related to COVID-19 put into the contract. So what I'm currently doing is basically saying, okay, if this happens again where the government shuts down stuff and you have to move your date, that's fine, we can make that happen, but you have to talk to me before picking a new date and we have to come to some kind of agreement. Um, and, and I think what I've decided upon is like, they have to give me three dates that are going to work for them and then I have to pick one of those dates or something like that. Now, in my new contract, if for some reason there's just no way no way we can make it work. It's just not possible. Um, I am giving back, uh, giving back that initial deposit or whatever, um, minus anything I've already done for them. So like if I've already shot an engagement session for them, I mean, I'm not going to give them all their money back because I've done stuff for them. I've done some work. Um, so that, I mean, that makes sense. So I, I put that in there because people were asking about it. So I was willing to change for people to make sure they felt more protected and, you know, so they wouldn't worry about me just taking their money and running with it. Okay. So as far as your why you need the contract, we kind of already went over this. 
it's for you and it's also for them. Um, it protects you because it states exactly exactly what they're going to do and all the things that they have to follow through with. Now, it protects them because it, the same thing. Um, it's going to protect them to make sure you follow through and do the things you're going to do. So like in the contract, if it says uh, if you cancel you know, within 30 days of the event, you have to pay all of it. There's some contracts that will say that. Um, there's other ones that are like, uh, what, what was it? I'm trying to remember the example I had in my head. Um, I mean, the big thing is about the non-refundable re uh, retainer deposit we'll talk about in a minute. So, I mean, that protects people. So, like, if I didn't have that in my contract, people could just like, oh, yeah, we'll hire you. And then they decide to change their mind or, oh, yeah, we're going to do that. And then they just disappear or whatever. Um, so it protects both of you. And it, it says very clearly, this is what is expected. Um, and general guys, please do not hire someone if there's not a contract in place. You are setting yourself up for something bad to happen. And if someone is like saying, like if they want you to hire them and they're telling you you don't have to have a contract, I would be a little afraid of them um, because a real business, someone that knows what they're doing is going to have a contract. Okay. Just like the example I showed you at the very beginning, uh, no deposit, probably no contract. They just didn't show up or they just disappeared and the person's left without, left without any help. All right. So once you have a contract, pretty much all wedding people are going to ask you for either a deposit or a retainer. And the, the language, children, the language may be a little different. Some people will say deposit, some people will say retainers. Um, from the legal advice I've kind of seen, I use the word retainers uh, because, I, I mean, I don't remember the exact reason, but supposedly that's what I should be saying. And all it is, is you're putting down money to hold or reserve the date um, with his competitive as it is for wedding dates it's important to be able to know that that date is taken so like i mean if bride a contacts me she's like yes i want to book you for this date um and then another bride contacts me and says oh i want to book you for the same date i mean if i go with bride a and i tell bride b no but the bride a hasn't given me any money yet there's a chance i may lose lose that date completely so not only did I miss out on one, I missed out on the other as well. Um, so it's important to have that money put down to reserve your date to make sure it is locked in. And again, it protects both of you. It protects you so you know that they're going to show up and it protects the vendor to know that you're actually invested in it. And the amount varies from company to company. Um, I used to do 50%, but I found that was kind of a big chunk to throw around so I've moved to just a straight up thousand dollars and I've also seen companies that'll do like 33% now, 33% in the middle, and then 33% at the very end. And the big thing here is you're almost always going to see non-refundable uh, deposit, non-refundable non -refundable retainer. Again, because we have to protect ourselves. We can't just be like, oh yeah, I'll just give you your money back after I've told three other people I'm booked. Um, and that's kind of why we do that. All right, some tips. Find out if there are any situations where it actually would be re uh, refunded. And again, it might be in the contract or maybe something you just have to ask them like, are there any situations where I would actually get it back? Um, so like one situation I think is, if uh, if they get sick or something and they just can't make it, you're probably going to get your your money back. Um, or if they just really screw up your whole wedding, they might give you your money back. But if it's you postponing or canceling, probably not. Um, and again, you can always ask for the change in the contract where there's some kind of thing where it is possible. And again, I, I said minus... In certain situations, I'll give the re the retainer back minus whatever the costs were for what I've done for them. Um, another thing you could always do is ask for a lower percentage. So if they're saying 50% retainer, you might say 
25% retainer just so you have less risk up front. So you're not putting down a giant chunk. You're only putting down 25% versus 50%. And again, it doesn't hurt to ask. They may tell you no, but you know, you don't know until you ask. Um, I already kind of talked about this. You know, it's good for both of you. Guarantees you they're going to show up and it makes sure we know that you are serious and you're not going, I'm not going to tell other people no until I know you're serious. Okay. Um, in general, guys, I would say try and get, make the conversation as clear as possible. So like when you're talking to these vendors, ask questions, get clarity. So you know all the details. This is what is expected and uh, make sure it's in writing. So you have some kind of copy of it. Don't just be like talking to them on the phone because then there's no, no uh, proof that they said something. Um, but know exactly what is expected and what uh, is going to happen in si different situations. Overall, though, I, please remember this because I've seen a lot of hateful, hateful stuff out there and I understand why. But be kind to each other and be flexible. Okay, I know it's tough for brides that are having to change stuff, but I also know it is tough for the vendors. Okay. Um, but there has been, oh my gosh, I've seen so many arguments and fighting and people complaining about stuff. Um, just try and be kind to each other and try and work with each other to make the situation turn out better versus worse. Okay, so please don't forget that, that everyone here is struggling with this. This is not easy for anyone. Okay. Let's go back to my face. There's my face. Um, okay. Does anyone have any questions or thoughts, opinions about any of this? I'm going to see if I can see if anything was written. No, I don't see anything. Um, but again, guys, be careful. Just protect yourself. I mean, look into stuff. And if you have questions, make sure you are asking them. I mean, ask them. Ask a lawyer. Because, uh, I mean, it's... It's kind of an important thing. I mean, I know some people that have lost thousands of dollars having to move their wedding. And legally a lot of them legally a lot of them are you know, like the I mean, you look at the contracts what the people sign, legally they're the vendors are in the right here. Um and I know that stinks, but Okay, so I'm just trying to help you guys out. I don't want you to lose a lot of money. I want to make sure you have a good wedding experience. I mean, if you have if you have any questions about this stuff, again, feel free to reach out to me and I will give you the best advice I can, even though I'm not a lawyer. Um, and then you can do what you can with it. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful day and it is almost the weekend. See you later.